Uh, first, welcome to the fourth edition of Big Data Spain. Uh, we are going to see uh, a bit of history about big data. Uh, and we are starting with the previous technology in big data before, uh, in data before big data. In the 1970, uh, the relational databases started with a white paper. Sadly, as uh, started big data technology, also with a, a white paper from Google. So uh, the previous technology has been like more than 30 years or 40 years around. And this can give us an idea of uh, what could we expect about the evolution of big data technology. Big data technology has been around for 10 years. So everybody's thinking about big data as something uh, really very innovative, state of the art. But big data technology is now more than 10 years old. We are going to see this here because some of the facts are quite surprising. For example, the problem of big data started in the 1997. So uh, as I was saying, it has been around for uh, more than 15 years. Uh, the three Bs, this, do you remember this volume, velocity, and variety, has been, uh, it was 2001. So they have been around for 14 years, the definition or the classic definition of big data. Uh, and the Google Map Reduce white paper was in the 2004. So we could say that, uh, in fact, big data is 11 years old. Uh, the previous technology, as I was saying, has been around for 40 years. So if big data technology has been only 10 years, it is still big data technology is like a child or a teenager. <laughs> so we are just starting to see what big data technology uh, will be able to, to achieve. And what has been the evolution of big data from the very beginning? From the 2004, up to the 2012 or something like that, we have been working with big data, especially for bats. In the 2006 uh, was when Hadoop, the first version of Hadoop, was launched to the, to the market. Uh, and from that up to 2012, we were doing with Hadoop bats processing, uh, the big data lakes processing at night. And in 2012, uh, we started to make these Lambda architectures combining BATS and real-time. Uh, they were exciting times because the, the projects, the technology was very complex, but it was too complex. In the 2013, 2014, started to appear new technologies like Spark that were combining but an interactive, the interactive definition is to, to process or to make queries, to move di data in the order of hundreds of terabytes or petabytes in, in less than 40 seconds. Uh, and also, they integrated real-time data streaming. So the evolution of big data has been batch processing, batch plus interactive, Interactive is, I can make a question and the system will answer to, to that question uh, in less than 40 seconds. So in a discovery phase, making questions and answers, I can get to, a, to an insight or some value in, in my data. And then real-time streaming processing. And in the 2015, uh, we, we are more in the machine learning, in the algorithms, but not for BATS. And the evolution for machine learning is very similar. We started using machine learning in BATS, and now we are combining or applying machine training to real time. So we could say that right now, the evolution of big data technology is BATS plus interactive plus real time and future data. Future data is the application of machine learning, the scientists, data engineers, and so on, 
uh, not only for bats, but for bats in real time. So big data, and this is one of the points that we want to, to point out, is big data is not informational or analytics only. Big data right now, it is used in real time, operational. And we are improving the businesses and the enterprises worldwide using this technology for operational use cases. So, what is our view of big data technology right now? This is like the evolution of the IT technology platforms. And this evolution, as you can see, um, like we can divide the IT infrastructure in three. The different generations are, the first one was the mainframe, the terminal. You can see this guy, we are talking about the 70s. And it was the generation with big, big computers. The hardware was very expensive. And the hardware was very important. Uh, this generation, the first generation of IT, is still several or a lot of the banks and telecom companies and insurance companies are using hosts and mainframes. So this generation is still is uh, running and you can find it. So the next generations are not replacing the previous generation. They are living together and working together. The second generation was when internet started and with the client server, the clusters. In these generations, the hardware was a little bit less important than in the first one, but still it was quite important. And this is the generation where, where we were using well, the Oracle clusters with Active, Active, or, and all these things. No? And this generation is still, of course, uh, is you could say that it is leading the IT infrastructure worldwide. And then the third generation is a generation where we are talking about um, distribution, distributed computing. This is the third generation, and this is big data. Big data is to join several computers in a cluster share nothing, working together. But it is very similar to the paradigm that are using the NoSQL databases. And in this generation, the hardware is commodity. The hardware is less important. And it is working together with a layer of software on top that is giving value to the hardware that, that is underneath. So uh, this is the generation of cloud. In cloud, you are making this elastic um, uh, machines working together, again, because you have some software on top of the hardware that is providing this elasticity. It is the same for, for virtualization and so on. So this is the third generation where we are. And in the third generation, there is no doubt. Uh, the data technology is big data. Uh, why? Because of volume, because of speed, and because of machine learning and algorithms. So. Big data is not something that is complementing or giving value, extra value. It is exactly as it was in the 70s when the relational databases were invented. 40 years after the relational databases, now we are in a new age. And it is the age of big data. And this technology is going to replace the previous technology. Still, we will have maybe five, 10 years to see it very clearly and to replace almost all the previous technology. But all the companies are going into that direction, the big one. Everyone. So, uh, well, this is quite an evolution. And we have seen a similar evolution in big data Spain that we will see right now. So this is, uh, for us, our view of the big data technology. It's a new uh, data technology that is replacing the previous technology. So if you want to use your data in the best possible way, uh, we 
encouraging to use NoSQL databases, big data platforms. Uh, also, there is one question that we have been receiving from the previous years. And uh, this question is, how is Europe compared to, to the USA uh, big data penetration? Uh, more or less, Europe is still had like, like uh, one year of delay against uh, versus US market. In fact, um, you can see it very clearly. For me, it is um, quite clear if you see the data that uh, the companies in US are moving and the data that in Europe the companies are moving. In Europe, the, the projects that we are doing and the average data is in the order of maybe uh, between 20 terabytes and 100 terabytes. The biggest companies in Europe are using 100 terabytes, not even more than 200 terabytes. Uh, in contrast, in US, we are moving in some companies right now a petabyte, and in fact, for next year, some of the companies that we are working, working with uh, are moving 15 petabytes. This means that uh, they are using like more than 100 times the volume of data that the European companies are moving. And so the evolution, the penetration is really a lot bigger in, in the US market. One very good example for us is Walmart. Walmart, well, you know, everyone <laughs> knows Walmart, of course. It is the, the leader in retail, in the retail market. And it is the leader like four times the size of the second one. So it is four times bigger than the, the second one in the retail market. Walmart started using big data like uh, eight years ago, making some proof of concepts. Right now, uh, the Walmart clusters are moving 100,000 cores. So uh, they are using in a private company or a physical and digital company, uh, they have the biggest clusters uh, available. So what, what they are doing right now, they are knowing and putting intelligence about their customers, uh, about the behaviors of the customers in the box while they are buying. Out of the box, they are analyzing what their customers are thinking, what do they like. Uh, they are also crossing all the information through all the channels, and they are doing this in real time and applying uh, algorithms and machine learning. What are doing the retailers uh, in Europe? Well, the, the summary is quite sad, but the second and third uh, biggest retail companies in Europe are not even using big data. They are just thinking about how to use big data and what for. So here you can see that in reality, in the European companies, not in all the sectors, for example, in telco and uh, financial, the, the, the companies are evolving faster, but in some of the markets, we are in Europe like two years behind US. And this is something uh, that really should concern us all uh, a lot. Well, big data Spain in numbers. Uh, for me, this is quite exciting. We can see here the evolution. Uh, it, this is the fourth edition. In the first edition, it was 220. In this, we are more than 800. It, it will be something like 850 people. And then we are multiply, we have multiplied by four from the first uh, edition to this one. But for me, it is even more impressive this. In the first edition, there were only 14 talks, so it was like a bunch of friends talking about big data <laughs> technology, the evolution, and coming people from all, all the world to, to chat about big data. In this edition, we have 45 talks, but we have received more than 180 papers. So it is sad to say no to most of the papers, but the quality of the talks that we, we have in this edition is really impressive, and we are very happy about that. So what are the, the things that, that you could expect and you are going to see during these days? Well, these are 
some of the highlights, but in these highlights, you can see the state of the art for big data right now. Data science, uh, I cannot insist more than that big data is the new data technology, and it is about machine learning and the scientists, data engineers. And so, uh, well, Paco, which is the next one, is going to explain this in a very clear way. In fact, uh, well, I, I only want to thank Paco to be here again. <laughs> and data science is very important, but as I said, real time is really important. Big data is not any longer about batch. It is about real time. It is about operational. It is about business improvement. It is not ingest data analyzed. It is ingest data analyzed and add, and then see if it is improving your business. So for this, you need, re need real time. And there is no better company to talk about real time processing at the scale that Linden. Linden is using um, creating Kafka, one of the best pushes in the in the market, the standard, you could say that it is the standard. So thanks again also to Lindin to be here. And, and for talking about data products, there is not better company, of course, than Facebook. Facebook invented some of the technologies that we are using, like, or were pioneers, like databases, no SQL databases as Cassandra. Uh, they are moving more than uh, 60 petabytes with 500 million uh, users. So really data products, there is no better company to talk about data products than Facebook. And of course, Google uh, is once again in the Big Data Spain edition. Um, they are going to talk about innovation and big data in cloud services. Uh, big data and cloud services, well, are really a perfect match because of the elasticity of cloud, and we are going to see some of the best uh, available examples uh, with Google. And last, uh, data visualization. Data visualization is really important. We always insist uh, the quantity of data is critical, the speed also, also, but to be able to visualize the data in, some, uh, in such a way that is giving you insights and value is very important, for example, for relations. And for relations, uh, one of the best available technologies, and we really fell in love with this technology several years ago, is Neo Technology with Neo4j. And they are going to talk uh, about graphs in finance and fraud detection. So these are only some of the highlights I want to thank also, uh, our sponsors, uh, special thanks to Riley. And just uh, to insist, this is a place not only to listen. Big Data Spain is mainly a place with the spirit of the first edition, a bunch of friends coming here to talk about big data, to engage, to solve any doubts, and, and to make deals and partnerships to move into this technology and to advance as fast as possible because the delay in Europe is still is about one year or two years, so the competitive advantage that we are losing is quite a lot. So once again, to insist to use this technology and to advance as fast as you can. So thanks for coming. Um, I want to, to give the, the talk on the microphone to Paco. So thank you.